Welcome to Green Bay's Bellin Hospital. I want to take a few minutes to prepare you and your family for the heart surgery you will be having here. I will talk with you about your surgery and the people who will be taking care of you during your stay. I will also talk about some of the equipment used and treatments you will receive before, during, and after your surgery. Your doctor has told you that you need to have heart surgery. Coronary bypass surgery is the most common heart surgery done for patients with heart disease. Let's take a few minutes to talk about why it is done. Coronary arteries are blood vessels which carry oxygen-rich blood to your heart. If a coronary artery is blocked, the surgeon can create a new path for the blood flow to your heart. This operation is called coronary artery bypass surgery. The surgeon will use another blood vessel, usually taken from your leg and or chest wall. The oxygen-rich blood is then rerouted and bypasses the blocked area. The surgeon may fix one or more blocked areas. Removing the blood vessel from your leg or chest will not cause problems with circulation. Please let your doctor and the nurse know before your surgery if you have had any problems with your legs. Surgery is sometimes done at the heart to repair or replace heart valves. Heart valves can become diseased from several different causes. In each case, the blood does not flow smoothly through the heart. The heart surgeon may be able to repair the heart valves. If a valve cannot be repaired, it is replaced with a new valve. A nurse will talk to you about your surgery after you view this video. Discuss any concerns you have with your nurse and or your doctor. Now we will talk about preparing you for surgery. In preparation for your surgery, you will be asked to take a shower or bath. Pay special attention to scrubbing your chest and legs with a washcloth and antibacterial soap the night before and the morning of your surgery. The night before your surgery, you are not to eat or drink anything after midnight, not even water or coffee. If you are already a patient in the hospital, most of the admission information and tests will already be done. If not, the nurses in our prepare department will take care of all admission information and tests several days before your surgery. Then, on the day of your surgery, you will be asked to check into the hospital a few hours before going to the operating room. If you are not already a patient in the hospital, I would like to remind you at this time to bring toiletry items, bathrobe, slippers, and any other necessary items, such as glasses and hearing aids, with you to the hospital. Also, be sure to bring your picture ID and a list of the medications you're currently taking. Please leave jewelry, including wedding rings, and any other valuables at home. At the hospital entrance, the hospital ballet staff will park your car for you if you wish. This service is available for family and friends while you are a patient in Bellin Hospital. After stopping at the registration desk, a hospital volunteer will take you to your room. Wheelchairs are provided for you, as well as family and friends needing this service. Please just ask us. If your family needs a motel room, they can take advantage of the discounted rates available at some Green Bay motels. Your nurse, chaplain, or a volunteer can give you more information. On the day of your surgery, several staff members will visit you. A staff member will settle you into your room and do a brief assessment. A member of the surgery team will come to your room and clip the body hair in the area where your surgery will be performed. It is very important to have body hair removed as it is a hiding place for germs. You then need to take another shower or bath, paying special attention to scrubbing your chest and legs where the incisions will be located. Before sending you to surgery, the nurse will have you empty your bladder, remove your glasses, dentures, makeup, nail polish, and jewelry. You may give these items to a family member. Before your surgery, you will be visited by your heart surgeon as well as an anesthesiologist, the doctor who will put you to sleep for surgery. You may receive medicine to help you relax before going to surgery. Since the medicine may make you sleepy, it will be important for you to stay in bed. Please let the nurse know if you need anything during this time. Oxygen may be given to you before surgery. If you wish, your family or other close friends may stay with you until the surgery nurse takes you to the operating room. 
Your family will be directed to the waiting room just outside of the Advanced Care Unit. The Advanced Care Lounge is staffed by a member of our Concerned Hearts Club. These volunteers, or a member of their family, have had heart surgery. Waiting can be a difficult time, since heart surgeries can last several hours. If your family feels especially concerned about the length of time you are in surgery, they can ask the volunteer at the Advanced Care Waiting Room to check how things are progressing. If you or your family would like to talk to someone about spiritual or other concerns, ordained clergy and other members of our pastoral care department are available. If you prefer, we will notify your own rabbi, minister, or priest. Bellin Hospital also has a non-denominational chapel open for your use 24 hours a day. Although your family members will receive a pager from the surgical team, it is important for them to let the volunteer or the nurse know their location or a phone number where they can be reached before leaving the waiting room for the cafeteria or elsewhere. Now, there are a few things we want to tell you about so you have an idea of what to expect in surgery. When you enter the operating room, you will see bright lights and you will hear the sound of several people and many pieces of equipment. Members of the surgery team will be getting things ready for your surgery. You may notice the room is cooler than your hospital room, but you will be covered with warm blankets. The doctor who puts you to sleep will put IVs into your arms. The IVs are used to give you fluids and medicine during your surgery. A nurse will put patches on your body so that your heartbeat can be watched on a monitor and a blood pressure cuff will be placed on your arm. The nurse and doctor will explain things to you as they are being done. The surgery will begin after you are asleep. You will awaken in your hospital bed. The surgeon will talk with your family in a private room after your surgery. Your family will be able to visit you about an hour after you return from surgery. During this time, the nurses will be checking you and the equipment used in caring for you constantly. Before each visit, all visitors need to check at the volunteer desk or call into advanced care to be sure patients are able to have visitors. The nurse will direct the number of visitors and the length of each visit. Initially, we encourage families to visit as a group. Relatives should be aware that it's okay to touch and talk to you. In fact, we encourage the family to do this to reassure you. It is important for these visits to be short. You'll need rest at this time. The Advanced Care Lounge is open all day and night for your family. There are many other amenities located throughout the hospital to make their stay more comfortable. We ask your family to choose someone who can talk to friends and relatives during the first few days after your surgery. This decreases the number of phone calls to your nurse and allows the nurse to spend more time caring for you. During the first several hours after your surgery, your nurse will be with you most of the time and will check you often. In addition, your vital signs will be closely monitored. As you improve, you will be checked by the nurse less often and will need less equipment. You will also be continuously monitored by the virtual ICU system. Each room is equipped with a special camera that allows an off-site doctor to have direct visual and verbal contact with you and the advanced care team. When you return from surgery, you may have a breathing tube in your mouth or nose which goes to your lungs. This tube is connected to a breathing machine called a ventilator. The ventilator helps you breathe deep, full and regular breaths. Each breath is rich with oxygen. It is important for you to relax and breathe with the machine. You will not be allowed to eat, drink or talk while the breathing tube is in place. We understand this and will be attentive to you. It is okay to nod yes or no, write us a note, mouth the words, or use hand gestures. Small amounts of fluid collect in the breathing tube and breathing passages. The nurse and respiratory therapist will use suction to clean out the tube. They will explain to you what is being done and how you can help. The breathing tube and breathing passages must be cleared so you can breathe easily and fully benefit from the oxygen that comes through the ventilator. The ventilator has several alarms to measure your breathing pattern. Do not be frightened by the alarms. They are sensitive and even small movements can set them off. The nurse is there to watch you and the equipment. The ventilator and breathing tube are removed when you are awake and can cough and breathe regular full breaths. The breathing tube and ventilator are usually removed within six hours after surgery. Once the breathing tube is taken out, you will be able to talk, move more freely, and slowly start taking liquids, starting with ice chips. 
It is common to have a sore throat and hoarse voice for a day or two. You will have an incision on your chest after surgery. You may also have an incision on one or both of your legs. You will have a bandage covering the incision for a day or two. The body heals quickly and so does the incision. Do not be afraid to breathe deeply, cough, turn, sit or walk. You will not hurt the incision. Tubes will be placed inside your chest during surgery to drain blood and body fluid from the chest cavity. Your doctor or his nurse will remove them in one to two days when the drainage has slowed down. If your doctor feels you need a blood transfusion, it will be given to you. All blood is tested for infectious diseases, including AIDS, before you receive the transfusion. When you are in surgery, a tube or catheter, which is used to drain urine, will be placed in your bladder. This is generally removed 24 hours after your surgery. You will then be able to pass your urine as you did before your surgery. A tube will be placed through your nose or mouth to keep your stomach empty during surgery. This will be removed with a breathing tube. You may need to wear ACE bandages on your legs as you recover from your surgery. Patients are concerned about pain. Your chest may be sore from the incision and it is important for you to be comfortable so you can rest, breathe deeply, cough strongly and get back on your feet quickly. Your nurse will show you how to use a pain medicine machine. The pain control button is connected to a small computer. Each time you press the button, a small amount of pain medicine passes through the IV. When you push the button, you will get rapid pain relief. The machine is set so you cannot receive too much medicine. When discomfort prevents you from moving or coughing effectively, simply push the button. Be advised that only you are allowed to push this button. The pain medicine machine is used for up to two days after surgery. It will be replaced with pain pills after that. We encourage you to take them as necessary to allow you to cough, breathe deeply and move. Secretions will continue to be produced in your lungs. The nurse or respiratory therapist will teach and encourage you to sit up and take deep breaths, cough and use your incentive spirometer or breathing exerciser. The breathing exerciser will measure the size of the breaths you're taking. Deep breathing and coughing, it sounds so simple, but because of pain and soreness, you may not wish to do this. You may worry about hurting yourself by moving or coughing hard. This won't happen. It is important for you to work with us. We have found that by holding a folded blanket or pillow over your chest and wrapping your arms around it eases the discomfort when you cough. You can expect to sit at the side of the bed within six hours after surgery. By the next morning, you will be able to sit up in the chair. We encourage you to sit up in the chair three times per day to eat your meals. This improves your digestion and increases your appetite. The more you stay up during the day, the better you sleep at night. When your doctor has determined that your condition is very stable, you will be transferred to the cardiac nursing unit. This is usually one or two days after your surgery. Nurses here are especially trained to care for patients who have had heart surgery or heart problems. You will be checked at regular intervals, but not as often as when you are in advanced care. Please let the nurse know if you have any needs. Your family can visit you for longer periods of time if you wish. You will have a telephone at your bedside and you'll be able to make and receive phone calls when you feel up to it. We encourage patients to take rest periods when able. Most patients catch up and sleep during this time. The work of recovery now involves your help and cooperation. You will be encouraged to help yourself with bathing and eating by this time. You will be encouraged to eat and drink as healing takes up a lot of energy. Your appetite should be returning. It is important for you to eat even if you don't feel hungry. Some people have a poor appetite or nausea as they recover. Please tell your doctor or nurse so they can give you medicine to settle your stomach. You may also choose foods that are easier to digest. It is very important that you eat to heal and regain your strength. Many patients have special food or dietary needs to be considered. We will work closely with you to help meet your needs. You may still need oxygen. We consider oxygen a medicine. Please wear it at all times. Once again, we will remind you of the need to cough and deep breathe to decrease the risk of pneumonia. 
You may begin noticing a generalized body aching and tiredness in the first few days after your surgery. This is common and may last a few weeks. You have had major surgery and your body senses this. Do not be afraid that you are not getting better. Please let the nurse know about any pain, aching, or tiredness. The nurse will encourage you to take medicine to make you feel more comfortable. When patients are comfortable, they rest better, move about easier, and generally get well quicker. Your heartbeat will continue to be watched until your doctor decides this is no longer necessary. A small radio is hooked up to the patches on your chest. A radio message is sent to the central monitor unit where your heartbeat will be watched 24 hours a day. Your nurse is notified if there are any changes and will contact your doctor if needed. On the day after surgery, a cardiopulmonary rehabilitation therapist will start your exercise program with simple stretching to exercise your arms and legs. When you are able, the cardiopulmonary rehab team will start you on a walking program. As you regain your strength, the length of time and distance you walk will increase. The walking is done under careful supervision. The cardiopulmonary rehab team will work closely with you, your nurse and doctor, while you are in the hospital. Education is an important part of your recovery. You will be given teaching materials with information you will need to know for your recovery. Your nurse and the cardiopulmonary rehab team will review the teaching materials with you, instruct you when necessary, and answer any questions you may have. When you are transferred to the cardiac nursing unit, you will be asked to watch Mending Hearts Part 2. This will give you information on the rest of your recovery in the hospital and what to expect when you go home. Your nurse will now talk with you and answer any questions you have about your surgery and recovery.